Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for this cake. I'm going to show you how I made these alcohol ink art inspired cake toppers. And I'm going to do this on a cake that I used a cake comb on buttercream, buttercream and I also did some airbrushing. And just to clarify, I know that this kind of topper was actually done by another artist recently as well. And it's just a coincidence. She had the same idea I did. I will go ahead and add a link in the description so you can go check out her work as well. It's just a coincidence. And I didn't want to not post this because somebody else had the same idea. So go check her out too. So what I'm doing here is I'm using some gel food coloring and I am mixing them it with some Everclear and I'm basically making a watercolor paint. You want to make this very diluted if you're going for a pastel-y look, which I was. And I did end up going back in right here and diluting the uh, color a little bit more. So I ended up using um, more colors than I intended because I diluted the previously made colors. So I just think it added a little bit of extra interest anyway. So might as well do it. And what I'm doing here is I am just using my paintbrush to add the watercolor onto this piece of fondant that I had already rolled out. Actually, it was fondant with some Tylos mixed in so that they dry hard enough to use as a topper on the cake. And I am just dabbing on that color and making sure that I have enough that when I use my, this is my airbrush with nothing in it, I'm just using it to blow air at this paint. I'm just going to call it paint, even though it's edible food coloring, so that I can manipulate where this color goes. Now you'll see that there is some overspray, and that is because my airbrush does not have multiple levels of strength. Um, so it just has one, <laughs> one, um, way to blow the uh the color around i can't turn it down onto a lower setting it's just not possible so i just went back in and added some more and just kind of blew it out to the point where i didn't you didn't see that anymore another option might be to use a base of um some of the everclear before onto the gum paste before I'm going to call it gum paste because that's what uh, Tylos basically turns fondant into um, so that would add a little bit more of um, your a liquid onto the product that would help the rest of the watercolor kind of flow across it that would be an option I would try that next time so I just did this whole process throughout the entire piece and then let it dry. It took maybe two to three hours to completely dry. And I did add some gold there too, so for a little bit of extra shine. And that's what it looks like before it is dry. Now, after it is dried, I went back in with my circle cutters, my circle biscuit cutters, and I just cut out varying different sizes. Isn't that pretty? I just love the shine on that from the gold. And I just cut out a bunch because I'd rather have too much than not enough. I don't mind throwing a little extra away instead of having getting to the point where you're like, okay, I need another piece here and I don't have any left. So what do I do? I'm going to have to roll it out and start over again? No, just make enough to begin with. <laughs> just make sure you have plenty. And now we're going to make those chocolate spheres. I'm just using white chocolate and I'm adding some um, of the candy melts in pink to it once I heated it up I heat it up on for a one minute at 50% power enough times until and mix it in between until you have melted all the way down and then I did add a little bit of burgundy gel food food coloring typically they say don't add gel food colorings to your chocolate but I find if you add just a little bit just a little bit you're gonna be fine and then I poured it or I used my piping bag to pipe it into my mold, my sphere mold, and then I just tapped it on the counter to remove the air bubbles that are at the bottom of those balls. That won't, that'll just happen. So just tap it out. Now I put those in the freezer to firm up while I, and you can put it in the refrigerator, whatever you prefer, but since it's humid out now, I wanted to make sure they were, they um, cooled down enough, so I put them in the freezer. 
And while that's going on here, we're gonna go ahead and put our buttercream on our already pre-crumb-coated uh, and filled cake. Now I'm just using this Wilton comb and I will add a link in the description on where you can purchase that. And um, yeah, just use that. I find holding it at a 45 degree angle and making sure that you rinse it off in between times gives you a cleaner finish on your cake. And I just put it in the refrigerator while I worked on the rest, um, you know, the, the end parts of de my uh, toppers. I can't speak tonight, <laughs> sorry. So I'm just edging them out with a little bit of gold. And here I'm making a shiny top coat. In the past, I have had you use or shown you how I use confectioner's glaze, and that's a perfectly fine way to go. But somebody had suggested I use this recipe, and honestly, this is my first time using it, and I did like it, but I will tell you the pros and the cons here. But what I will leave the um, recipe in the description there. It's a gelatin-based product, and being a gelatin-based product, it did create a very pretty shine. The one thing I did notice is that when it cooled and it dried, and not cooled, but when it dried, it shrunk a little away from the edges and it pulled some of that gold edging into the middle. So what I would do next time is just not worry about putting that gold on the edge until after your product has dried. And those are going to take a little time to, to dry. I would say probably about an hour to two hours to dry before you can put them on the cake or before you can touch them. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my spheres from the mold. And all I have in this bag is some luster dust. I just put a little bit of luster dust in there and put these spheres in there and just shake it up. And that coats the chocolate and then use your fluffy brush to remove the excess. And that adds a little extra shine too. I think they shined up really nice. So those are ready to be put on the cake. So we need to finish decorating the buttercream. And what I'm doing is I'm just using those same colors that I used on the toppers and putting them into my airbrush and just spraying it on. Now I'm kind of trying to do a gradation of color, a little bit deeper towards the bottom and paler as it goes up. And then I went in with the gold and I did the very bottom and a little bit on the top edge. And there, yes, I see there is a chunk missing out of the buttercream on the top. That happened when I pulled it out of the refrigerator, but I didn't worry about fixing it because I have these decorations to decorate the cake with, cake with and then I can hide that. You'll never know it was there. And then I like to use a little bit of Everclear to remove the paint from the board. I find it's kind of like fingernail polish, fingernail polish remover. It removes it the easiest that I have found. And then I just touched up that very top edge with a little bit more of the brushed on gold paint. It's not actual paint, I'm just calling it paint. It's edible. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put our finishing touches on after that airbrush dries, which doesn't take any time at all. Now just arrange these in whatever pattern you find appealing to your eye. And then I thought with those colors, those, what are those, cherry blossom flowers would be really pretty with the burgundy and the pink. And I just used a little buttercream to attach those. Now we're going to speed it up here. This could take a while, so I might as well just show you how to speed it up. And I just used a little buttercream to attach those to the side too. And then some gold dragees. Gotta have your gold dragees. Do I ever do a cake without golden dragees? I don't know. Maybe silver? <laughs> Change it up. Do silver. Living on the edge. And then use some of your decorations on the bottom just to tie it all in together. I find that if you don't overthink it, you tend to get a better result when it comes to placement of your decorations. I mean, have a general idea, but don't overthink it. You don't have to draw a sketch and place every single one of them on your sketch before you put it on the cake. You'll figure it out. Trust your artistic eye.
All right, guys, so there she is all done. I love this color combination of the burgundy and the pale pink and the white and the gold. I think it all works together really well. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please comment, like, share, share it to all your other cake friends. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.